Good morning, everyone. I am not certain at all if my previous attempt at doing a post this morning made it on to the Trinity page. I'm still struggling with my webcam. Needless to say, let's go on and do some <clears throat> a morning devotion here together. Uh, what uh, I want to talk about today is one of our readings for Sunday, this coming Sunday, May 3rd. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but first, I want to talk about all the life that's out there today. We've got a beautiful day. The sun is shining. I've got a great view of uh, the buds on this birch tree right outside my window. The birds are chirping. Uh, earlier in the morning, I heard the cardinals, the little chippies of the cardinals. I just love cardinals. I love birds, frankly. And um, I am not much for house plants because I generally kill them. Um, so, uh, I like short-term things, <laughs> right? So fresh flowers I love because I know that I will have no part, uh, in whether they stay alive or not. They are just eventually going to die. But here is a little treat I brought, I bought myself this weekend when I went shopping. Mmm, fresh basil. <sighs> yep. I realized last year that I can keep a basil plant alive. So I figured out the secret for that. So I'm looking forward to having basil in, uh, there's a watermelon feta salad that I make with a little bit of mint on there. I don't know if basil's in that one. It might not be, doesn't matter. I will use my basil. So at any rate, life is all around us. Even though we might be stuck inside, not being able to do what we wanna do, yet we still have life in Christ and we have it in abundance and our, our, uh, our gospel passage for this Sunday talks about abundant life in Christ. So I want to give a little preface for that both today and on Wednesday. I'm going to talk a little bit about that uh, passage. Uh, so the one I'm referring to is from John, the 10th chapter, verses 1 through 10. And in that passage, uh, Jesus uh, likens himself to a gate or a door. And it's one of the I am statements. And if you're not familiar with those I am statements, they're throughout John's gospel. He has a number of them. Jesus uses them a number of times. But basically they have their beginnings in Exodus chapter 3 when Moses um, encounters the burning bush. And he speaks to God through that burning bush. And he asks God his name who can I say who you are when I go back to the Israelites? And God responds, I am who I am. So the fact that Jesus is, is uh, using I am uh, is very significant. We'll talk, as I say, I'll talk, want to talk a little bit more about that on Wednesday. Um, but for us, when Jesus uses those I am statement, he is getting us to focus on who he is and he uses different ways to tell us about who he is, how we encounter him. Those I am statements are found only in John's gospel. Um, and uh, like I said, I'll talk about a little more of those on Wednesday. But I also want to tell you a little something that's very important to understand the text this weekend from John. Uh, the New Testament was not written already with chapters and verses, right? That's something that took a long time to happen. As best I can figure out, uh, the 13th century saw the New Testament being divided into chapters and along around the 16th century, I believe, verses started to be uh, numbered. So why is that important? Well, uh, because the story that we get in John chapter 10, where Jesus calls himself the gate, the door, the gate, uh, and later goes on, uh, it's the, whole sh the shepherd motif. And, um, well, chapter 9 is very important to understand that. So just because we have this division here between chapters 9 and 10, don't let that fool you into thinking what happens in chapter 9 has no bearing on chapter 10. So I'm giving you some homework here this week. I would love for you to go back to the beginning of chapter 9 and read through, it'd be great if you could read through all of chapter 10, but at least through verses 1 through 10, which we're covering in our scripture on, on Sunday. It's about um, hearing Jesus' voice, right? My sheep know my voice. 
And uh, it's not only in this passage where uh, Jesus talks about the sheep hearing Jesus's voice, knowing who he is, but we hear that in the previous chapter, in chapter 9, with the man born blind. He responds to Jesus' voice and he's healed. We hear, we see other uh, indications of this too. In the story from Lazarus, Lazarus come out. Lazarus responds to Jesus' voice. We see it on Easter morning when Mary goes, Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb. She sees a gardener there, but she's mourning. She's in such grief that she can't see who Jesus is until he calls her name. So it's about uh, hearing that voice and knowing who he is. So um, do that reading uh, and ask Jesus, uh, ask the Holy Spirit while you're reading to, to have you hear that voice. And as you go in your day today, uh, if you take a walk or, or whatever you do, think about hearing Jesus call to you and what uh, what that means, where you hear that, where uh, where Jesus is, where you encounter Christ. Let's pray. Gracious God, we come before you at the beginning of a new week. We are thankful for your presence with and among us always, but especially now in this time of pandemic. You know where each of us are, Lord. Some of us are doing fine, others not so much. Take our anxiety, our fear, our depression, our worry, and replace it with your peace. Be with all who are on the front lines in health care. Be with all who will on this day be diagnosed with COVID-19. Bring comfort to all who are losing or have lost those they love to this virus. Guide our steps as we move forward, helping us to be ever mindful of those around us. Help us to hear your voice, Lord, and help us to always remember that you have got us, that we belong to you. We are sheep in your fold. In your name we pray. Amen. Dear friends, who knows if I'll get the webcam figured out, but at least I have this. So thank you for being with me today. Go and make this a wonderful day. Remember, God is with you always. See you soon. Bye-bye.